Music is something that mostly every culture has and can be so unique and different um, all over the world. Um, the concept of creating music deals with self-expression, art, um, and even commentary on the world around you. Um, and I believe that music is something that should not be suppressed, um, especially by the government, um, because it allows for talented people um, and intelligent minds to get the recognition and revenue um, that they deserve. The biggest electronic music festival in East Africa is called Niege Niege. Um, the sixth annual Niege Niege festival was held at Itanda Falls in Uganda. Um, the event attracted 15,000 visitors from across Africa and Europe. And a week before the event, uh, the Ugandan parliament tried to shut the festival down, um, led by one politician named Henry Maurice um, Kibilaya. Um, and he said that, quote, it is immoral, it destroys our children, it destroys everybody. Um, and this wasn't the first time the festival gained attention from the government. Um, back in 2018, the Ugandan Minister for Ethics and Integrity, um, Simon Lokodo, um, tried to cancel it as well, um, and he was unsuccessful. Um, and Uganda is a socially conservative by major and by majority is a Christian country. Um, and four days of loud electronic music um, is a foreign concept for many conservative U Christian Ugandans. Um, another thing that doesn't help is that the festival's name, Niege Niege, um, translates to horny, horny in Swahili. Um, however, the festival name actually comes from the local Luganda language, which translates it to um, the irresistible urge to dance. Um, in the end, the government ended up allowing the festival to, um, to occur after the co-founder Arlen um, Delizian uh, attended a cabinet meeting with the Ugandan Prime Minister. Uh, he promised that the festival would prohibit um, behaviors such as nudity and drug use uh, that the government was worried about, um, and they ended up relenting on um, trying to cancel the concert and let it happen. The Niege Niege Festival has some pros to, the, to Uganda as a whole as well. Um, it can bring in tourists, which help with competing tourist countries around them, such as um, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, um, and help, help competition against tourism. Um, along with supporting artistic expression, um, the Niege Niege Festival also runs a record label, um, which has helped a plethora of local smaller uh, musicians to find success and reach a broader, bigger audience um, of people and fans. Um, they specialize in electronic music, which um, there is a lot of subgenres and um, diversity in the music type um, of electronic music. So getting these lesser known music genres out to uh, more people and getting them more well known might make the stigma around um, electronic music a little less um, a, like for example what the government um, was saying about it is that it is immoral and it destroys the children um, it's just it's music it's expression and they want to reach a bigger audience of people and uh, remove any negative stigmas around the genre and type of music um, and Uganda is a country where aspiring artists, um, especially who create music outside of the mainstream, have a difficult time succeeding. Um, so with the help of this Niege Niege, the, the label, the record label, um, the, the, this non-mainstream um, subgroup genres, they grow as a whole. Um, and the final part of the Niega Niega operation is the booking agency. Um, the booking agency helps African artists secure European shows, um, 
or any other shows around the world um, because the um, the European booking agencies might not be familiar with um, smaller artists uh, like by themselves different language language barriers um, and however the the um, the booking agency for Niega Niega has a bigger name a large larger group of people that can um, go to these venues in Europe um, so they can secure them gigs um, to get more money because there's more there's more money um, in the venues in Europe um, they give them better deals and percentages um, so the 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 Niega Niega um, booking agency helps the artist in the um, company to book venues in Europe and all over the world um, kind of just breaking the barrier um, to get get them get their name more well known like they use their big name um, to help small artists tour um, and the Ege Niege brought much larger profits to um, like local musicians all over Africa uh, for example DJ Diaka um, could earn up to two thousand dollars for a single show in Europe compared to the ten dollars an hour he would have made back working a wedding in his home country Mali um, and this does not and this would also include um, and at the home wedding um, him having to purchase and bring all his own equipment while other venues in Europe um, and etc um, provide it for you. After the major, major success of the festival this year, Niega Niega has plans to tour in Britain, Latin America, and the United States all next year. Um, Niega Niega provide these beautiful success stories um, for underdogs, um, up-and-coming African artists um, to really get their name out there. Uh, for example, um, the artist DJ Campire started off performing in front of just the Niega Niega community um, at their Kempala parties. Uh, they held these little clubs just locally um, and they got their, their en enough recognition through these clubs and parties um, with, with Niega Niega growing with them. Um, they were able to get like tours across to Europe with their booking agency and amassed a large following of fans um, and was able to even open um, for Diplo, who is a huge um, musical artist with a large following of fans, as you can see here. Um, another example is Odom Alpha, who is a genre pioneering local Ugandan artist. Um, he took a long necked harp used to play pr traditional music of the Yekoli people um, and shifted it into a new genre, combining it with electronic music. Um, this genre pioneered this this new genre that he pioneered is called electro Ecoli. Um, and through usage of Niega Niega concerts, it has grown all over Africa um, in Odom Alpha. Um, has gone on to perform in stages such as in Belgium and Denmark, Denmark as well. Um, talk about the founders of the Niega Niega um, organization. Uh, there are two white, two white European men, um, not local or native to Uganda or Africa, um, which could raise a couple red flags, um, as the artists are um, all black. African Ugandan artists. Um, the two founders did share that they they think the um, organization would be run better if it was by Ugandan people. Um, however, in all the years, no one ever tried or attempted to. Um, so no one did. So they did. Um, but they have they have looked at it and what like the scope of not trying to take advantage of people. Um, even one of the um, disciplinary artists, um, Darlene Kumukukama, uh, um, is a Ugandan native who has been working with the Niega Niega Communications from the very start. Um, she believes that the organization would have never gotten it where, um, where it is today if it were run by black uh, Ugandans. 
Um, and the reason of this is because um, the Western world has provided um, most profits for the organization and the artists involved, um, such as these European tours where they're getting $2,000 a show. Um, and um, she feels that the artists and the organization would have never gotten to that height if it wasn't for the privilege of the two white men in charge um, that can get these connections and get these um, names and artists into the Western world where they can make, uh, where this money is readily available um, and their talent can be seen by a larger audience, uh, maybe audiences where electronic music is more common. Um, as said before, that Uganda is uh, majority Christian and conservative and um, not very uh, genre bending on their music, their mainstream music choices. Um, so electronic music can be appreciated more in other places so they can get their name in those other places. Um, and the two founders are very aware of the colonial exploitation, exploitation um, of white men using black talent for money. Um, and they're very cautious of avoiding that by all means. Um, and the, um, the same dis uh, multidisciplinary artist, Darlene, um, she suggested that the best way to gauge if the founders show colonial greed um, is if they claim ownership of the artists that they help grow. And um, both founders, the founders do not claim any uh, ownership um, of any artists that they've helped grow, no matter how big they've helped them grow. Um, even big, like big stars such as DJ Campire, which we mentioned before, um, and rapper MC Yala uh, have gone on to work with other agents and they've been okay with it. Um, and the both co-founders, um, uh, Dil Sizian and Debru, have um, shared that they do not make much money from Niega Niega. So most of the money is going to the artists, which is how it should be. Um, uh, the festival was a huge success. However, the team were still faced with some challenges prior to the start um, date. This year's festival was in a completely new location in the middle of a pine forest and river, which meant that stages, food stalls, and restrooms had to be built from scratch. Um, and also Uganda has frequently gets tropical rainstorms um, as well, which could lead to dirt turning into mud, making it more difficult um, for construction of the whole. Um, and these challenges were prevalent during the festival this year. Um, they didn't make too much of an impact as the people enjoying it um, didn't didn't care about it that much um, as like campsites were half finished and facilities as well. Um, also reports of security um, with crimes ranging from pickpocketing to more serious assaults, um, which come with a lot of music festivals but it still is an issue as um at some attendees reported that it was more um it, the security was worse than previous events um even though they had um like armed security guards and state um and like like a uh, police state police um there they felt that security was worse than previous events um however Majority of attendees were still content with and were just amazed with the impressive diversity of new music being offered um, and new new faces, new talent, new opportunity being offered by the festival. Um, another um, artist who grew up in um, Kampala, Uganda, um, and he used his music in... Um, image that he gained from music to try to make a better change in politics. So not only um, can music give opportunity for um, careers and self-expression, um, um, enjoyment with these festivals, but um, this musician, um, Robert um, Kila 
Kiligulani, um, who's more formally, and I'm going to address him as um, Bobby Wine, which is his um, our, uh, musician name, um, started making rap music in the slums of Kampala, Uganda. Um, he initially was involved in just little businesses like selling tapes and records um, and making bricks. Um, but by the early 2000s, he put in the work, he made a name for himself um, as in the East African music scene. Um, and listeners loved him for his um, dance hall blend of reggae, um, Kirindali, um, native um, music, uh, and Ugandan Afrobeat. Um, his song catalog consisted of love ballads, um, uh, rap songs with gloating about riches. Um, he exuded he exuded the with with the love ballads he exuded the stereotypical um, braggadocio of rapping. Um, and by the late 2010s, his music flipped a complete switch. He replaced the love ballads with um, rap disses and inflammatory um, lyrics of the Ugandan establishment. Um, and these ideas of politics in Uganda led Bobby Wine um, to run for parliament in 2017. He was successful in his bid for parliament um, and he was ready to, ready to make change with his populist, pro-democracy, anti-corruption movement called People Power. Uh, People Power amassed a substantial following, especially in the young urban community. Um, and the movement symbolized, is symbolized by red barrettes and clenched fists, which all point towards revolution um, and change and change change for the good. Um, and, and he did this with his popularity from his music origins. Um, this wasn't just a random politician out of the blue. He, he used his music to say say the change he wanted and use that following to actually make a change, run for parliament, um, and um, with, with, use of, with use of his movement, um, strike towards a revolution, um, which in, in my eyes, this, it, it is, it's a just revolution. Um, yeah. All in all, I think music is a great way to share your ideas to a large audience of people, um, anyone who hears the music, whether they like it sonically or whether they like what is being said in the songs. Um, an appreciation for the sonic music can lead you to look into what they're saying, what the lyrics say, and the lyrics could could lead to a backstory of someone that, that you can relate to um, and make you more interested in their music and make you suggest it to someone else and help the, helping these artists grow, um, which gives them careers and gives them confidence um, and maybe even give yourself confidence. And also, as we can see with Bobby Wine, um, the music can help you understand um, the political nature, like the, the the world around the world around you. He gives commentary on the politics in Uganda and how he wants change. And the the music, if it can strike a fire, strike a match, strike a feeling in you to want change as well. Um, and sh spreading it, spreading it with music is a great way to do so and to use that following and to actually uh, make change, um, I think is a great thing to do and should not be suppressed. Um, like in, in the beginning, the, the, the government tried to cancel a festival, cancel a music festival, can cancel this expression. 